isolation. Just as the isolation of places like Australia have allowed evolution to experiment in strange new animals, so the isolation of the new continents could have caused the dinosaurs to diverge. Normally we would think that this might keep the dinosaurs from getting big because the land areas are getting smaller. But that's not what happens. Uh, they get larger and larger. Isolation doesn't answer why anything would want to be huge in the first place. Carrying around that heavy load required sturdier limbs and more energy. Here are animals that are, in many ways, 10 times bigger than the biggest land animals today. And yet, they must have been subject to the same rules of physics uh, that we have today. Gravity hasn't changed. Uh, the atmosphere hasn't changed very much. Uh, and so how do they manage that? They're certainly structurally capable of, of walking and standing. Dr. Don Henderson looks to modern animals for inspiration. So to study the largest land animals ever to set foot on Earth, he takes a page from the largest land animals on Earth today. Elephants, as sort of these large ground herbivores, are our best shot for the sauropods. Being large may have benefits. Large plant eaters can get from place to place more efficiently because their strides are huge. But they may have become big by necessity, from the tough to digest food they ate. There weren't fruits and grasses like we have today. There was a lot of low quality, very woody plant material, and that needs a large digestive tract to process it. And to have a large digestive tract, you need a large body to carry it. Far and away, the best reason for a prey animal to become humongous may have less to do with eating than with being eaten. It becomes virtually attack proof. If a lion is going to find a dinner, it's not going to tackle some five-ton monster. Why not take a little 100-kilogram deer or something? It's just all around easier and safer. Elephants are a great example. Once they uh, get past that first year of life, an elephant's really not uh, susceptible to predation anymore. Lions just can't kill an adult elephant. So it makes sense for plant eaters to become enormous. But why didn't carnivores remain the light, agile, and voracious predators of the dinosaur world? Hey, big bomber, how are you? Yeah, you hungry? Huh? You hungry? Ho, ho, ho. Yeah, look at that. Paleobiologist Dr. Greg Erickson also studies gigantism. But he studies it from the other end of the food chain, the predators. Animal like this can generate 2,000 pounds of bite force. Oh, imagine scaling this thing up to the size of a Tyrannosaurus Rex. It's, uh, you know, it's just mind-boggling to think about. Crocodilians perfected their killing ways back before dinosaurs arrived on the scene. So evolution hasn't had to tinker with their design much. And the St. Augustine Alligator Farm in Florida is the perfect place to study them. It has every living species of crocodilian, from dwarfs to giants. Like dinosaurs, crocodiles evolved into bigger creatures over time. This is the skull of a 160 million year old crocodilian. And one thing I want you to notice is that the skull of this animal is about the same size as the head of this hatchling alligator. This is an interesting pattern that we see in the fossil record time and time again. Members of the dinosauria, members of the crocodilia, members of the mammalia, all started off as very small organisms and only later diversified into much larger forms. The new coyote-sized crocodilian, Junkersuchus, illustrates the principle as well. It was only one meter long, but its super croc descendant was 12 times longer and happy to eat gigantic dinosaurs. 